So we're going to talk about phase change materials, but to do that, we really need to get a grasp of what a phase is, what a change is, how the different heats involve work together, what limitations it has, what we can do about those limitations, and how we can use all of that to build an awesomely efficient machine. So we're going to run through that and at the end have a look at the machines that are being built. So let's have a look at the first bit of it. Now we live in a physical world. So all materials exist in a physical state and there are basically four of them. But the main one we interact with are solid, liquid, gas. There is also a plasma, but solid, liquid and gas are the main phases of a material that we'll encounter. Now, Materials have a curious property, or rather some of them do. That is, they can change from one state to another state, that is, a solid to a liquid, or a liquid to a gas, or gas to liquid, liquid to solid, and when they do that, they use energy. They use thermal energy, or heat. Now, there are a ton of examples of this that everybody knows. Ice turning into water, a candle wax melting into a liquid, but the key isn't just the change of state, it's the energy used to change that state. And that energy can either be absorbed or given out. Now think of a rock. If you can, <laughs> if you get a rock on a fire, it doesn't change, it just gets hotter. And you can use that heat to do things like boil a pan of water. That heat storage and given out in something like a rock and all other materials when they don't change is called sensible heat. But phase change materials use something called latent heat, and this is the key to them. Because latent heat is to do with the change of the phase without a significant rise in temperature. So the temperature doesn't change much, but the material can change from a solid to a liquid and take energy. And that energy is called the latent heat. And that use of latent heat is what defines a phase change material and the amount of heat can be surprising, it can be a huge amount. Think of it like this. Ice melts at zero degrees centigrade and it absorbs heat from its surrounding to overcome the internal energy holding together its solid structure. This absorbed heat isn't reflected in rising temperature, the water is still at zero degrees centigrade, but rather in the loosening of the bonds and the change from a solid phase to a liquid phase. Conversely, when the water freezes back to ice, it releases the stored latent heat, keeping its surroundings slightly warmer. Okay, so using water as an example to explain what happens in a phase change material is a great way to explain it and to demonstrate the difference between latent heat and sensible heat. But water, well, those two changes occur at zero degrees centigrade or a hundred degrees centigrade. And so, of course, that's a little bit limiting, but there are a whole range of phase changed materials that are called engineered phase change materials and they have an enormous amount of uses. So you can use them in construction. So put them in the walls of a building and they'll absorb the heat during the day and give it back out during the night. Or they can be used to do amazing things like run phase change motors or they can be put into things like a Stirling engine to run a Stirling engine. So they're immensely useful and you have to bear in mind that this is not about change in temperature. Temperature doesn't measure heat. Temperature measures movement. Now that's a little bit controversial, so maybe I'll go into that in another video. But if you get this idea of energy in, energy out, then the changing from a solid to a liquid to a gas is a change of phase that requires its own energy, and that energy is called the latent heat. Now, phase change materials, well, they do have their own problems, of course, because there is an efficiency that's involved in changing that phase. And if you can improve the efficiency, then you're going to improve the range of things that you can do with them, and you're going to improve dramatically the efficiency of some of the machines that work on them. And of course, the key to improving the efficiency of a phase change material is with nanoparticles. Now, if you look back on the channel, you'll find we've done a 
loads of videos, something like 30 or 40 videos on how to make nanoparticles in lots of different ways, including one of my favourites being a mechanochemical synthesis. You basically chuck a whole load of things into a grinder and leave them grinding for a couple of days and you'll get nanoparticles, although we have covered other methods of doing it, and in particular copper nanoparticles. The curious thing about copper nanoparticles is they don't look like copper, in fact they're black. And the reason they're black is because they're exceptionally good at taking sunlight and turning it into heat. In fact, they'll do that with heat. They're just brilliant at making that conversion. And of course, phase change materials require heat, but usually they're actually really bad conductors of heat, being waxes or liquids or something like that. So adding nanoparticles into a phase change material, particularly copper nanoparticles, makes that phase change material very much more efficient because it can absorb light or heat and integrate it deeply into the phase change material. And of course, this has been looked at, perhaps the most famous one for me, is when Rice University used it in the solar still to create a steam generator that was very much more efficient. Now, the researchers at Rice managed to get that to be something like 90% efficient, which is incredible, really. But another good use for this would be in a thing like a thermal storage battery. Now, a thermal storage battery is something like the sand battery, and of course, we've covered that on the channel, building sand batteries, exploring their use and using them in different ways. But if you don't know about it, you should certainly look it up. However, it isn't much more than a glorified sauna. It uses the sensible heat to heat the material, but it doesn't undergo a phase change. And if we can overcome the limitations of phase change materials by adding nanoparticles, we could make a very efficient thermal store battery actually relatively easily. Because the thing that puts people off about nanoparticles is they assume they're hard to make. Actually, if you review the videos, you'll find that they're stupidly easy to make. Anyway, I thought I would go through all of that and highlight some of the links. I hope you enjoyed the video. And thank you very much for watching. Oh, please do remember to like and subscribe.